Welcome to committee. You have five minutes. Members of the committee, I'd like to thank you for listening to my presentation. Uh, I'm a professor emeritus from the Dalai Lama School of Public Health. I specialize in cancer, cancer epidemiology. I have done research on both ionizing and non-ionizing radiation and have found effects on cancer from both forms. I am, uh, have also served on a number of committees working groups of the International Agency for Research on Cancer in Lyon. I was the first representative on the Scientific Council of the, that agency of Canada. I chaired the Scientific Council. And very recently, I spent three months as a senior scientist there. Uh, and part of my duties were to review the documentation provided uh, that enabled the working group to determine that radio frequency fields were a 2B carcinogen. Now, what, uh, what that essentially means is that it's regarded as possible. It doesn't mean there's no evidence. That would be inadequate evidence. That would be category three. It doesn't mean sufficient. That would be cat category one, such as asbestos. However, that review was done in 2011. And since then, there have been a number of studies reported and fairly recently, I and some colleagues in the United States and Israel uh, published a paper in which we set forward the reasons for our view that uh, the proper designation now, if a working group were to meet, would be category 2A, that is moving it nearer to the sufficient, making it a probable human carcinogen. Now, we in public health did you wish to? I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, we in public health believe in prudence of, prudent avoidance. And we are particularly concerned when you're dealing with something like cancer because we know that most cancers have a very long natural history. They're influenced not only by our genetics. There are among us people who are much more susceptible than others to the influence of external influences, influences that increase the risk of cancer, but we do not at this moment know who they are. We also know that when you deliver a potential carcinogen over a wide area in the environment, you expose numerous people and you may increase risk to a small proportion, but you can't identify who they are. But that doesn't mean there's no harm. And as you increase the dosage, as you increase the amount of radio frequency uh, fields in our environment, you will in fact increase the hazard. And it seems to me, unless I can be reassured that this proposal before you is actually going to reduce exposure, it seems to me it's going to increase it, that what you are in fact a setting, if you approve this, you're setting the scene for increasing cancer risks, probably brain tumors, several other cancers, which you will not be able to identify, I would say, for 10 to 15 years. Now, I won't be around then, but many of you will. And uh, I think this is an important responsibility that we have to protect the public in the future. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I will cease my presentation at this point because we're short of time, uh, but I would be pleased to answer any questions anyone may have of me.